بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله we'll do our lesson number eight today this is the vocabulary for lesson number eight protein mutate fickle fluctuate deleterious revamp amend emulate disdain and frugal let's dive into it and let's just do the quotations and we'll go from there first one is by yours truly and it says any particular illness may present with common, rare, or classic manifestation. A common illness may present with a rare manifestation, and a rare illness may present with rarer. Recognition of the protein manifestations of pathology constitutes the science of medicine. Well, it may be a little heavy duty, right? Uh, so let's see what protein means first. So protein means, it's an adjective, uh, something that's capable of assuming different forms um, from apparently that uh, form changing or uh, Greek mythological sea creature god named Proteus. Um, so um, Proteus. And the synonyms is polymorphous, morph meaning form, poly means many, uh, something that is able to have many forms, labile, changing. Antonyms, immutable, something that does not change and stable. So proteins mean something that's capable of assuming many different forms. Just like the proteins, there are so many different kinds of proteins, right? So, so this quotation is about how disease presents, them, presents uh, in different forms, see? So I, have, I get this all the time, so patients ask me, well, I don't seem to have this classic symptoms of this disease, so why do you think I have something like this? Uh, so because, uh, this, because the reason for that is like this. So the statement says, again, any particular illness any particular disease process may present with a common. For example, somebody might have pneumonia, they have a fever, they have a cough, they have a, a difficulty breathing, and they do a chest x-ray, and the chest x-ray is abnormal, and the chest x-ray shows pneumonia. But not all pneumonias present like that. Sometimes the early manifestations of pneumonia, for example, the chest x-ray is normal. So it's only one part of the, uh, uh, of the uh, findings that suggest a diagnosis. So any particular may present with a common presentation, but then a rare presentation where there are very few clues, but the clues are so peculiar that you have to be really in tune to them to make sure you get the diagnosis right. So any particular illness may present with a common, rare, or classic. Classic means that everything that's peculiar to that illness is like 100% like picture perfect textbook type of pre presentation. But not all the time, uh, b um, but, the, but any, any, no disease presents with classic presentation all the time. So it com presents with common presentation, a rare presentation, uh, or classic manifestation. A common illness may present with a rare manifestation. A common illness may present with a rare manifestation where the only sign of, for example, of pneumonia may be difficulty breathing, the earliest manifestation. And if you kind of like, you know, poo-poo that, it's, oh, you just got a cold, then you might, you might miss the diagnosis of pneumonia. So a common illness may present with a rare manifestation and a rare illness, something that you don't see very often, so a disease that you don't see very often may present with not its common presentation, but its rare presentation. So a common illness, a common illness presenting with a rare form and a rare illness presenting with its rare form, that's even harder because you don't see this illness particularly, right? So a common illness, if it presents with a rare form, you might recognize, but if you have a rare illness and if it presents with its rare form, that's actually much harder, right? So now, so that's what this statement is saying. This statement is saying that rec recognizing the various different forms of, of a disease, recognition of the protein, recognitions of the so many different forms of presentation of the disease, recognition of the protein manifestations of pathology, in this case pathology means disease, constitutes the science of medicine. So you know, people often say medicine is this, is uh, there's the art and the science of medicine, right? 
the art of medicine is something different. Art is how you interact with the patient, and the social aspects of medicine. The science of medicine is precisely this, is understanding the disease process and the various presentations of various illnesses. So recognition of the, uh, of the protein manifestations of pathology constitutes the science of medicine. So that's protein. Okay. The next um, um, quote, uh, fame, is by Henry Miller, the playwright. Fame is an elusive thing, here today, gone tomorrow. The fickle, shallow mob raises his heroes to the pinnacle of approval today and hurls them into oblivion tomorrow at the slightest whim. Cheers today, hisses tomorrow, utter forgetfulness in a few months. Written like a poet, Henry Miller. So fickle is is like, you know, um, here it is. Fickle, likely to change opinion unpredictably. Capricious, vacillating, mercurious. Like one day somebody is like your friend, best friend, the other day they hit you, and then the next following day they're like your friends again, and then you're not quite sure where they are. That's fickle. So changing, likely to change opinion unpredictably, usually f implying the not, not necessarily for the best or most secure of reasons. So that's fickle. Mutate, we shall get to in a second. Mutate to change form as a mutation. So fickle. So here, Henry Miller saying something very important, actually. Saying fame is a very elusive thing. It's very difficult. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's mysterious, right? Fame is an elusive thing. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Right, so if somebody's like famous, you know, they, they shouldn't let it get to their head. Is that's what they're saying here? So it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. The fickle, shallow mob. So the mob. This who is the mob over here? It's very interesting. See, the, the, uh, he, you can see he's a writer because he, he he chooses his words very carefully. Now he, the shallow mob. Who, who are they talking about? The mob. This is the audience. See, in his case, if he's a writer. He's talking about an audience, so this could be, you know, the fans of a, or, or something like that of a person, so or the audience, and okay, the fickle, shallow mob, and they use the word mob here, not audience, and they and, and they didn't talk about admirers. Um, they're using the word mob to to imply that what they're saying is that uh, they have a mob mentality sometimes, you know. So uh, they're not as don't be too attached to to this mob is what they're trying to say. The fickle shall fickle, fickle means changing opinions unpredictably, right? And they're shallow, meaning that they they don't look at you deep. They I mean you know they're not like committed. It's like this. they're not faithful fans, right? they most most fans are fair weather fans, as they say. The fickle shallow mob raises its heroes to the pinnacle of approval. Pinnacle is like the highest, like the his Mount Everest, right? And here's the Mount Everest peak over here. That would be like the pinnacle of the mountain. So the fickle uh, shallow mob raises its heroes to the pinnacle of approval. They love them, love them so much today and hurls them into the oblivion and, and throws them down into oblivion, nothingness, tomorrow at the slightest whim. Cheers today, hisses tomorrow, utter forgif forgetfulness in a few months. And that's uh, it's quite amazing that this is this has been known to be the case with the with great scholars, right? Right? And then so in the amal bil niyat, right? You really have to make sure who you're trying to please, uh, and uh, you don't want to be pleasing a fickle, shallow mob. I'm telling you, so don't be pleasing a fickle, shallow mob in life, because uh, yeah, precisely uh, Henry Miller uh, would prove uh, you uh, prove, would prove himself correct. Okay, number three, mutations are responsible for the magnificent diversity of life. The uh, I try to find good quotations that are not very long. Even if I can't find good ones, that's when I try to write something on my own. But this is just a simple statement. The mutations, uh, sometimes people have the negative connotations about mutations. All muta not all mutations are bad. Some mutations are responsible for the most mutations, most of the diversity of life is, uh, as from science point of view, is is uh, related to the mutations that occur spontaneously in the genome. Okay, that's easy enough. The mutation, as you can see over here, is to change form, transform, transmogrify. If you want to sound fancy, you can use transmogrify as change. Number four, 
quotation number four. Your net worth can fluctuate, but your self-worth should only appreciate. This is a very beautiful statement. I like this one. So, uh, so first you have to get the word fluctuate. So fluctuate is to vary irregularly, like vacillate. So fluctuate is to go like this, not constant. So, uh, or, or vacillate is the same thing, right? So you have like vacillating fans, right? So vacillate is to fluctuate and waver. So waver is different. Waver has a different connotation. Waver is more like to hesitate, right? Waver, you know, you, somebody's wavering about their decisions, going back and forth and hesitating. Vacillate is to go back. This is vacillating. Wavering is like, hmm, I'm not sure. Mm, oh, like that's, <laughs> that's how I perceive it anyways. So uh, to fluctuate is to, to, is to vary, to change. So this is a beautiful statement. It says your net worth can fluctuate. In other words, how much you're worth can fluctuate in terms of uh, uh, you're talking about finances, right? So your net worth can fluctuate. You might be not you might not be so wealthy one day, and then you might get some money, and you might earn get a good job, and you you might be you might find yourself in a better situation, and then you lose the job, and then you are back to where you were. So your net worth can fluctuate, but your self worth, this is very important. Your self-worth is how you see yourself, how you value yourself. It should only appreciate. Now, appreciate here is not used in the common sense of the word. Uh, appreciate is, uh, here is to increase. It means increase. Because stock, in terms of stock market, see, if the value of a stock appreciate means it's increasing, it's the, and the word depreciate, the opposite of that is to decrease. Okay, that's how. So appreciate here means to increase, and this is a very true statement. So your net worth can fluctuate. You know, how much money you, a person has uh, should uh, uh, could change, but how you see yourself, how much, how, what do you think about yourself, should only increase over time. That's very fascinating. They, they, they. Uh, this person, uh, see, they, they made a beautiful statement here. They didn't say your self worth should remain the same. They said your self-worth, how you see yourself, so improve every day. Because you should, as an individual, try to improve yourself every day in life, right? You, know, you should not be the same person tomorrow as you are today. That would imply that you wasted the day today. So, and this is very important. And, and uh, um, a lot of people, you know, uh, assess a person's worth based on, for example, the car they drive or the, the home that they live in. And those are things that you know, can change over time, or they, even the way they dress, etc. So um, that's kind of a very superficial per perception of life, and uh, really, uh, no. Number five, all amusements to which virtuous women are not admitted are rarely upon it, deleterious in their nature. <laughs> Rely upon it. So William uh, Makepeace Thackeray, William uh, Thackeray here says, all amusements, okay, deleterious means harmful. Here's the word, causing harm or damage. So deleterious, causing a bad, basically, causing harm. So deleterious means causing. All amusements are things that people use for fun, okay? So amusement is uh, fun things that people think, people think that they're fun, but basically bad things. All amusements to which virtuous women are not admitted. Virtuous women, good women. Uh, uh, the things that good women are not invited to and rely upon it are deleterious and then are harmful. I mean, if you, you know, it's like if you don't want your sister to be doing it or your mother to be doing it or your aunt to be doing it, then uh, don't do it. I mean, so that's basically what they're trying to say here. So all amusements to which virtuous women are not admitted and uh, are rely upon it. That's so it was a good golden rule, right? So um, true statement. Number six, or another one by yours truly, I guess. Uh, to revamp your life, most people are familiar. Revamp is to like renovate, improve. Um, to revamp your life, let's just look at the meaning. 
revamp, to revise, to renovate, re means again, refurbish, renovate, right? To revamp, right? To uh, uh, do over, make over type, make over type thing. To revamp your life, to make, you know, if you're not very happy where you are, and you want to make dramatic changes, right? Sometimes people do make dramatic changes. Like, one day they decide you know, they're not going to smoke, for example. They're not going to do something bad or whatever. So they just quit. And, say, and, and that's that's true. Uh, uh, but most patients, I tell my patients, you know, quit smoke. Most people try quitting smoking like five, six times before they're successful. So you can't, like, give up. And, you know, and if even less is better than more. Even so. But some people are, are able to quit stuff. Uh, like cold turkey, and that's cool. And um, uh, to revamp your life, to renovate your life, the most important thing actually is this, I think, actually. Very true. Avoid drama. I mean, like, you know, forget about small things. It's like, okay, somebody hurts your feeling. Fine, they hurt your feeling. Get over it. I mean, it's not the first time. It won't be the last time either, right? So avoid drama. Don't make a mountain of a molehill, as they say. Don't make a mountain of a molehill. They say, don't make a big deal of small things, right? Don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff, as the title of the book says. So don't make a big deal of things. That's very important. And avoid drama in small things. And sometimes people, you know, wise people, they are they are so calm, right? Uh, not me, but the wise people, who, they're very calm in nature because they, they to them, everything that of this of this worldly life, is small stuff truly for wise people everything of this world is small stuff so it doesn't bother them phase them right they do the right thing they right they get upset for, for what Allah and Rasul Allah some would get upset with etc but this is a very this is a very important thing that we should always aspire for is avoid drama you know and that's the common parlance. I mean don't get excited about stuff okay and then uh, don't make a drama about when people hurt. Don't make a drama about your mistakes either. I mean, if you make a mistake, okay, fine. I mean, that's what Bunny Adam does, right? Fine, you did it. At least you just try to plan out, you know, do toba, right? And stop. Don't make a drama of it. Just, okay, understand that's the nature of life. That's the way it is. And don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be soft on yourself. Then don't be too hard on yourself either. Avoid drama. Make a small change today and stick to it. And that's it. Make it small. If you can make a big change today, great. If you're doing something very bad and just, yeah, it's not like, you know, somebody's like, you know, goes and beats their, you know, uh, buddies, let's just say, so to speak, and stop doing that. If it's illegal, don't do it, you know. So it's not like, oh, I'm, you know, it's thief that, a thief should not say, no, I'm going to make small changes to, instead of robbing big banks, I'm going to also just ATMs or something like that. No, they got to stop that stuff right away. So small, small changes in habits, right? So, to revamp your life, avoid drama, make a small change today and stick to it. Withstand the pain of dying bad habits. When, when people are trying to quit bad habits, see, that's, that's not easy because there's, their, their neural circuits have to be rewired and it hurts, it's not comfortable, they have to be patient. So you have to withstand the pain of dying bad habits. And then if you fail, you restart it. I mean, it's not, that's what life is, restart if you fail, I mean, you can't give up, I mean, it's like, just do it over again. What's the big deal? I mean, you, you're not the only one who suffers from some challenges in life, and you're in good company. Millions and millions, probably billions of people who, who need to you need to be doing what you're trying to do in life and get better. So avoid drama. All right, that's a revamp number seven. It is the highest form of self-respect to admit our errors and mistakes and make amends for them. Amends is to here to make changes to improve uh, to remove the false of to see amend is to change like amendments to the Constitution we have a Constitution right and then there are changes to the Constitution they're called amendments right first amendment second amendment blah blah blah, blah. the first ten amendments the being the Bill of Rights etc but amendments are the changes that but amendment are not changes to the Constitution Amendments has a better connotation. Amendments are changes to the constitu Constitution that improve it. So when somebody amends something, they're not just changing it, they're improving it. Because you can change something and make it worse, yeah? yeah? So, but amend is to change, to improve, to remove the false off. Rectify is to make uh, amends that's of wrong. Rectify is like when you do something wrong and you do something to redress it or to redress it. 
and uh, make it better. So if somebody has has they have a poor relationship with their parents, they go say sorry. They're rectifying the relationship. They're they are changing the relationship. They're improving the relationship. They're making it better from from a place that it was bad. So you rectify things that are bad, but you amend things that might already be good that you can make them better, right? So it's a slightly different connotation. Rectify is to uh, bring back to uh, to to good or uh, from something that's broken. So uh, so that's so amend is to change, take something and make it better. See, so rectify something that is broken and make it whole again. See. So redress is, has a similar meaning. So there's a slightly different connotation for these words. Ameliorate is to make better. Mitigate is to uh, make it less bad. That's the other thing. See, all of these beautiful words, these are all beautiful words. They don't have exact, they don't mean exactly the same thing. Amend means different from redress, which, uh, which means different from rectify, which is different from ameliorate, and it's different from mitigate. If you know all these things, you, you have a richer vocabulary and, and uh, all of these words will come to us at one time or another. So we're amends to improve. Let's go back. So this is a beautiful, another beautiful statement. It says, um, it is the highest form of self-respect to admit our errors. So when you make mistakes, it's a beautiful thing. I don't know why some people just when they screw up and they, or when they make a mistake, they just can't say, you know, I'm sorry. So you have to be able to admit in life when you mess up and just when it, when you have to say so. Now, if you end up saying sorry too much, means and somebody says sorry a lot and people don't respect it, that person. The reason is because you know, come on, man, how many times are you gonna say sorry, right? You fix yourself. So you have to make changes in life. You have to revamp your life so you're not saying sorry all the time, right? That just means you're being lazy about your personality. You got to work at it so you're not saying sorry all the time. But anyways, but from time to time, when you make really ma bad mistakes, you gotta say, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, mom, I'm sorry, Matt, dad, etc. Is the highest form of self-respect. I mean, if, if if you cannot make yourself say sorry, yeah, um, if you can't do toba, so to speak, then that's a big problem. It is the highest form of self-respect to admit, I mean, love protect us from such things, uh, to admit our errors and mistakes and make amends for them. See. You can make amends. You can make yourself better. To make a mistake is only an error in judgment. This is a very beautiful thing. If you make a mistake, it's an error in judgment. You just you just made a bad decision. Okay? You just made a bad decision. But if you stick to it, but if you if, be, uh, <coughs> adhere to it, like Shaitan did, right? He made a mistake. Right? And uh, But it, adhere to it when it is discovered... And when you find out that, you, oh, you made a mistake, and everybody knows you mistake, and you know that you made a mistake, but you're, like, stubborn. You're sticking to it. But if you adhere to it when it is discovered, shows infirmity of character. Infirmity is weakness. Weakness in character. So to make a mistake is just an error in judgment, but if you stick to it and you know when you're wrong, this is just a weakness in character. So uh, when you make a mistake, recognize it and uh, make changes of it. That's a good one. Number eight. Uh, number eight, Alan Cohen said, Great masters merit emulation, not worship. Emulate. Okay. Emulate is to like, you know, imitate. Imitate something that you like. Emulate, imitate, try to equal or excel. Emulate is to be like, you know, you, you want to try to emulate Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's really about it. So, the Sahaba. Prophet and the Sahaba. The pious predecessors. That's whom you want to emulate. Nobody else, really. Uh, you can emulate good characteristics anywhere you find, of course. Great masters merit emulation, not worship. So we merit, so great people emit emulation. You can imitate, but you don't worship them, right? Because uh, uh, we're taught to emulate people who have passed away because people who are living can still make mistakes. It's the end that counts, right? So great masters merit emulation, not worship. Sahih. Number nine. Greatness starts with the replacement of hatred with polite disdain. This is a very beautiful statement. Very subtle and very beautiful statement. So, greatness starts. So, if you want to be, to, if you're over here and you want to be, have some aspects of great personality. I got to tell you, speaking of some aspects of good personality. The first thing you got, if you want to, if you want to taste what the Sahaba were like, their character was like. If you want to, just listen carefully. 
Listen carefully. Okay, listen carefully, okay? If you want to taste the character of the Sahaba, what they were like, I encourage you to do the following. And it's easy. It's not that hard. Don't use foul words. Because they're so common. Yeah? In my in my lifetime, there was a time when women, you know, they never used foul words. When a, if a woman used foul words, it was considered, like, yikes. I mean, that's that was, that was, they just didn't do that. Women didn't smoke also at one time. You know, it was respectable. Women they just thought they wouldn't smoke. But, so, but nowadays, it's, it's common. It's, and it's, it's, it's terrible. Okay? You don't have, there's, you use foul words. It's not necessary in life. Yeah? And it's it's like I've said this before. I was playing basketball one day, and then I, and my son, and and then I I shot, and then I missed a shot. I think unfortunately either. I like to say I didn't miss the shot, but I did. And then I, I landed on my foot and broke my foot. I didn't use any foul words, not a single foul word. Why? Because it's not necessary. It's not you know it's it's just not necessary. What are you gonna do? You know what kind of person is that? Anyways, so. So that's achievable thing, and, and I mean, opinion is like, like you know, it was, it's it's easy peasy. Well, really, it's not that I can't. It's not you know. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah. So greatness starts with the replacement of hatred. So if you want to feel like this person saying greatness, right? If you and if you you have to take hatred. Hatred is a very not a good thing. So hatred. Hatred. Hatred is something very is is a is a loaded word, you know. Most we should talk about we can talk about that too. Hatred is a very not a good thing. You know, the Yoda says, you know, fear leads to the path, the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate, and hatred leads to suffering. It's very true. Okay, when people hate other people, right? When people hate, where does hate come from? Yeah, I tell you, hate when people hate other people, uh, and you, I hope this is alien. This 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 emotion is alien to you. So the the root cause of hatred is anger. It's very important, Stan. Most of the time, and the root cause of anger is fear. So this is very useful if you because you don't people don't, you don't know how to deal how to deal with hatred. Well, underlying that hatred is anger. Okay, you can pacify anger. You can ameliorate anger. You can mollify anger, right? You can amend the, the, whatever caused them to be angry, right? So how do you do that? You gift people something. If you fight hatred with hatred, it's not going to work. How's that going to work? Yes. So they're angry, and why are they angry? They're angry because they're afraid of something, right? They're afraid, you know. So, like for example, as some people say, they're afraid that all the, you know, um, the illegal aliens will come and take your job. I mean, really? Really? So, you know, they they get the worst jobs, man. They're the one who, you know, you know, who who work for peanuts. So. So you have to address what's bothering you. Listen, it's really nothing to fear, you know. Not that I'm saying, I'm not making a policy decision. I'm just saying, what, I mean, there are options. Let's talk about it, right? So when you, if you want to figure out why somebody's really angry, uh, somebody's angry, you want to see what's bothering them. This is a very beautiful, beautiful um, uh, concept to appreciate is the most of the time the root cause of hatred is anger, and the anger usually emanates from, anger can be from many different things. Anger could be because you were denied your justice, right? You denied your justice. So many causes for anger, but mo most of the time, anger at the root cause of anger is some fear. So you have to ask, what are they, what are they afraid of? Or, or you, if this you feel some anger in yourself, you have to ask yourself, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid that you're going to miss, or you're going to not get, or you're going to happen to you? So you have to. Uh, so it says, as as uh, Roosevelt said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. All right. That's number, so, uh, oh, we're not done with the statement. So number nine says, okay, greatness starts with the replacement of hatred with polite disdain. So if you find yourself to have this on the other side, instead of being hating, disdain is like dislike. You have to understand that hatred is a bad quality, and you want to replace it with, at, at least, to look upon or treat with contempt, despise, or scorn. It's not, it's not as bad as 
as hatred. It's in, unlike and this 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 definition here, they're kind of to look upon it and treat with contempt, despise or scorn. That's a strong word, but hatred is worse. Polite disdain is to not you can dislike it, but not like that bad. All right, that's what I think that means. So yeah, you gotta tone down is what Lupit is. That's what he's saying. Tone down. All right, number ten. Benjamin Franklin says, "Disdain the chain. Disdain, dislike the chain." He's talking about chains, like uh, slavery type chains, those type of chains. Okay, dislike the chains. Now, this could is metaphorical. You know, he's trying to be dislike the chain, the, dislike everything that that chains you in life, everything that makes you a slave. Preserve your freedom. Disdain the chains. Preserve your freedom and maintain your independency. Be independent. Don't be slave to anything or anybody. Be industrious means be work hard and free. This is very true. If you want to be truly free in life, it's not easy peasy. You have to be industrious. You have to work hard to be free. Yeah, you have to work hard to be free. Free of what? Free of everything that you're afraid of. To be frugal, be frugal and free. Be frugal. Be frugal means thrifty, not spendthrift. Be frugal is be thrifty, not wasteful, economical, prudent. So somebody is frugal, they don't waste money. Okay? So Benjamin Franklin is advising, disdain the chain. Hate the chains that make you a slave. Preserve your freedom and maintain your independency. Be industrious, work hard and be free, and so that you're free. Be frugal and free. So here's he, Benjamin Franklin, mind you, he, he's not a, he's a very, 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 very smart individual. And um, in, in, in the, his office, the founding fathers, of the founding fathers, was like such as Washington, George Washington, Jefferson, John Adams, uh, Patrick Henry, etc. Uh, of the founding fathers, he was the most famous, well known throughout, throughout the world in his time and liked except for the British of course you know because uh, they, they were fighting Americans were fighting against, even before the war he was liked even in, the, even in England so he was very he was a very smart gentleman so when he says something you might want to pay attention he cho he chooses his words very carefully too now if you notice in this particular statement is it's all about freedom okay and he's giving you ideas and these are very powerful things if you want to be truly free person in life you have to do a few things. Okay? You have to dislike the, uh, uh, that you're a slave. Uh, so you must, you must have a strong dislike for being a slave. Um, and maintain your independency. Um, how? You have to work hard. You have to be frugal. Okay? Don't, don't be like, I want everything every day now type of thing. Alright, we have two bonus quotes here and then we'll stop inshallah. Bonus number one. Beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship that's true cut if you want to save money cut down cut down on small stuff because if you with well, a couple of things here so beware of little expenses they add up a small leak will sink a great ship so be aware of small expenses the other thing small expense besides the fact that small expenses add up people who can't control small expenses they can't control big expenses when it comes time for, to get a new car there and they, they're even if they can't afford it they can't help themselves to get themselves a new car or something like that so you have to learn to control your expenses uh very important lastly uh winston churchill the prime minister of england during second world war Success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. It's very true. Winston Churchill is another individual that you should uh, get to know. Uh, he was something else. Uh, and he's a man of words as well. Um, success is the ability to go from failure. Is it, he tends to say witty things. Smart, witty things. Because um, that's what he's known for. A satire too. Success is the ability to go from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. I mean, go from failure to failure. I Man said, like, fail, okay, fine, let's do it again. Fail, you can do it again, this type of thing. And uh, that's a very important aspect of a strong personality. Inshallah, until next time. Assalamu alaikum.